Hi class, today we will be talking about infection process. So, without further ado, let's get start. The basic purpose in life consists of two things, namely survival and reproduction. This goal applies to humans as well as microbes. Microorganisms continuously colonize humans. Contact between humans and microorganisms can benefit both. This relationship is controlled by intact defense mechanisms and the harmless nature of microorganisms. Factors that weaken host defenses or increase the virulence of microorganism can disrupt equilibrium and cause disease. In unusual circumstances, contact between microorganisms and humans can lead to dangerous or potentially lethal consequences. The degree to which the balance shifts in favor of microorganism determines the severity of the disease. Infectious disease, along with maternal, perinatal, nutritional conditions, are the cause of 21% of mortality in Indonesia. Infectious diseases are a group of common diseases caused by different pathogens that have infectivity and can cause epidemics as well as threaten individual health. Infection is the process by which an organism forms a parasitic relationship with its host. This will produce an immune response in the host and produce the associated sign and symptoms. The immune response can be local or systemic. In certain circumstances, infections can occur but causes a reaction to colonizations of the organism. Individuals who experience this are considered carriers or carriers. The development of infections begins through transmission. Transmission is a complex interaction of pathogens, an environment conducive to transmission, and host susceptibility. The infections may invade only the surface and be destroyed by the epithelial defenses. The infections can also be subclinical so that it only causes an increase in antibody titers before being destroyed. However, infections can also cause obvious injuries and clinical symptoms or are called infectious disease. Infection can cause infectious disease which then have the potential to cause epidemics. There are several sources of infections namely patients who experience acute or chronic disease, carriers or carriers, and infected animals. Epidemic processes and epidemic factors also involve transmission roads, such as transmission by contact, air, food, insect, blood, or soil. In addition, the vulnerability of a population has an influence of, on this, Factors that influence the epidemic process include natural factors and social factors. The development of infections passes through three stages, namely the incubation period, latent infections, and the transmission period. The incubation period is the time during which the pathogen enters the host and causes symptoms. This can take days, weeks, or months. In latent infection, microbes have entered and multiplied. However, these microbes remain inactivated or latent for years like tuberculosis and herpes zoster. After a period of latency in breeding, the pathogen can move and spread to other parts. Agents of infectious disease can be viruses, bacteria, fungi, parasites, rickettsia, chlamydia, and rickettsia. Microorganisms are divided into several types which are distinguished based on their intrinsic 
properties. Viruses are the smallest microorganism. The RNA or DNA of the virus is covered by protein. Viruses are subcellular that has that replicates only in host cells and are not sensitive to antibiotics or drugs. There are also microorganisms that have bacteria without cell walls and small self-replicating genomes. This microorganism is mycoplasma. Mycoplasmas are also resistant to many antibiotics, can pass through filters, and are host-dependent. Meanwhile, single-celled microbes that have clear cell walls and grow independently without a host are called bacteria. Bacteria are classified into several categories, namely spherical cocci, rod-shaped bacilli, spiral-shaped spirilla, or spirochetes, from positive or negative stain, motility, capsulation, spore formation, and bacteria in the human body. Pathogens that infect human through insect bite are called rickettsia. Most of the rickettsia are animal pathogens. Rickettsia is a small gram-negative, obligate intracellular organism, causing life-threatening disease, but is susceptible to antibiotics. A single cell or group of cells that are undifferentiated and do not have a cell wall are called protozoa. Protozoa have a nuclear membrane and large collections such as roundworms or flatworms. Unicellular, which has fibrous growth, are called fungi. Fungi have a cell wall, nucleus, specialized small cells, oval in shape, and have branch filaments. Another type of microorganism is prions. Prions are proteinaceous infectious particles that lack nucleic acid, have long latency, and have animal to human transmis transmissions such as mad cow disease. Infectious disease agents have different ways of injuring host cells. Viruses are the simplest form of life. Viruses consist of small fragments of nucleic acid surrounded by a protein coat. Viruses can replicate only in living cells that have been attacked because they require the host's metabolic machinery. Bacteria injure host cells by releasing toxins. Bacteria are divided into gram-positive and gram-negative, and a toxin is a toxin that is released during cell destructions by gram-negative bacteria. Meanwhile, exotoxins are toxins that are spread by living bacteria. Infectious agents not only injure cells but can also cause disease. It begins with an agent that enters the host cells and kills the cell directly. Cells are killed through toxins released by viral agents. In addition to toxins, enzymes are also secreted to destroy tissues and blood vessels. This will cause an immediate inflammatory response. Viruses injure cells through two main processes, namely cell killing and lysogenic infection. Lytic infections or cell killing is the process by which the virus proliferates rapidly and destroys the invading cells by taking over the metabolic machinery of the cell for the need of the virus. In lysogenic infections, the virus does not proliferate in the invade cells so that the cells are not injured or killed. The nucleic acids from the virus enters the host cell's DNA and replicate at each site. This causes several things, such as latency, activations caused by certain factor, or stimulations of neoplastic transformation. Cell injury caused by viruses is caused by several factors, such as the genetic makeup of the host, the type of virus involved, the immunity of the host, 
the resting regenerating state of the infected tissue, the genetic makeup of the virus, and physical factors. In contrast to viruses, bacteria and larger parasites are not intracellular but are extracellular parasites of the organism being attacked. Larger bacteria and parasites generally injure the host cell not by taking over the cell's metabolism but by attacking the cell from the outside using toxins. A small number of bacteria are intracellular and reside in the phagosome sac. This bacteria can cause cell killing through rapid replications and lysis or escape from the host immune response and proliferate in endosomes. Bacteria secretes two types of toxins, namely exotoxins and endotoxins. Exotoxins are toxins that are secreted from the surface of living bacteria and endotoxins are toxins that are secreted from the inside of broken dead bacteria. The two toxins have different effects on cells. And the toxin, which is a lipopolysaccharide and component of gram-negative cells, walls can cause septic shock, which increased TNF, IL-1, and IL-2. Meanwhile, exotoxins, which are proteins released by bacteria, can destroy tissues by di digesting structural proteins from cells. Exotoxins also interfere with signaling pathways leading to cell killing. In addition, exotoxins also inhibit the neurotransmitter release to trigger par paralysis. Pathogens consist of different types. Pathogens are basically microorganisms that have the capacity to cause disease or an infective parasite that injures the host and stimulates an immune response. Pathogens can regularly cause disease in otherwise healthy individuals. These pathogens are called primary pathogens. In addition to healthy individuals, pathogens can also cause disease in immunocompromised individuals. These pathogens are called opportunistic pathogens. The ability of an organism to cause disease and damage to host tissues is called pathogenicity. Transmission can occur through five main routes, namely contact, air, spark, intermediate, and factor. Transmissions by contact can occur directly or indirectly. Direct contact includes skin-to-skin -skin and mucous membranes to mucous membranes, such as sexual contact, biting, touching, and kissing. Transmission through indirect contacts can occur through objects such as injections and ingestions of food contaminated with faces through the hands. Transmissions can occur through the air where very small organisms fly through the air for several hours. This host can inhale the organisms when coughing or sneezing. Examples of airborne pathogens include tuberculosis, chickenpox, and rubola mesles. Sprinkling transmissions has larger particles than airborne pathogens. Coughing and sneezing also have a role in transmission through splashes at certain distances. Transmission that occur through intermediate involves a common sources. Sources that can mediate transmissions are contaminated food, water, and intravenous fluids. Transmission through factors involves insects or animals as intermediaries between the host and the pathogen. Examples of disease that are transmitted through factors are Lyme disease or creutzfeldt jakob disease. Some microbes can transmit by more than one route. Disease transmission is influenced by several factors. These factors are route of entry, virulence, number of organisms, host resistance, reservoir, and exit. 
the transmission change starts with the reservoir. Reservoir is an environment where microbes can, li can live and reproduce. Animals, plants, soil, food, and organic nutrients can be reservoirs for microbes. Reservoir provides the needs of microbes to survive at certain stages. Some microbes can live in two or more reservoirs. Require two reservoirs or requires only human-to-human -human transmission. Symptomatic or asymptomatic carriers may serve as reservoirs. The next chain is the entrance. The route of entry can be ingestions, inhalations, bite, contact with mucous membranes, and transplantations. This is also influenced by the number of organisms and the durations of exposure that varies. In addition to the entrance, the exit is also part of the transmission chain. The exit or portal of exits is a place where organisms leave the reservoir. The exit is the site of growth of the organism that is related to the entry of the microbe to the next host. Places that are common outlets are secretions, fluids, and excretions. The susceptible host in the next transmission chain. Every individual has different vulnerable vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities changes with time, each behavior and knowledge. In addition, vulnerability is also influenced by gender, ethnicity, and century and socioeconomic status. Long-term treatment and medical disorder can increase the risk of host susceptibility. Each individual has a first, second, and third line of defense. The first line of defense is intact skin, sweat, aerial cilia, cough reflex, tears, saliva, mucus, chemical compositions, and pH of body fluids. The skin mucous membranes of the oral ca cavity, stomach, and vagina have microbes that are normal flora in, the, in these areas. Pathogens replication is controlled by microbial antagonism. Opportunistic infections will occur if this is disturbed. The second line of defense involves the inflammatory process which is local reactions to cell injury. The inflammatory process is the body's attempt to destroy or neutralize pathogens. Host tissues can be injured if these processes are not balanced. The third line of defense involves the immune response. The immune response is triggered after the pathogen is cleared. The immune response will use memory about the pathogens to create protections against subsequent exposure. 